It's finally here. Welcome to the Deep Lab Cut 2.2 Multi Animal Pose Estimation and Tracking Tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to walk through using 2.2 using the Project Manager GUI in a case where we have multiple mice that look highly similar. I'd also like to highlight that the documentation on GitHub has been substantially updated. You can search for MA Deep Lab Cut to find the specific points where 2.2 has changed the workflow including many more video tutorials and different scenarios in which to use Deep Lab Cut in appropriately. To begin, we're going to create a new project in the GUI and crucially check, is it a multi-animal project? We're going to click OK. And the next step is then to edit the config file, as there are several new features we need to be aware of. As we highlight in the documentation, the config file now includes individuals, unique body parts, and multi-animal body parts. Crucially, you also need to define a skeleton and have this over-connected. Please see the docs. Much of the workflow is going to feel highly similar. For example, you extract frames as before, you can crop frames ahead of time additionally with the GUI, if you have multiple videos, you can ask which ones you might want to crop and extract from, so on and so forth. One new option is the GUI to allow you to crop frames ahead of time, i.e. it allows the first frame of video to be loaded, you can select crop, and then extraction proceeds as planned. Namely, here the default is k-means clustering, so we'll cluster all the frames and select the specified number that you put in your config.yaml file to extract for labeling in the next step. I'll also highlight here that you can see that in the terminal, it tells you when the next process step is ready. It tells you you can now label your frames. As usual, you're going to load. This is, of course, the new multi-animal GUI, so it has several features which we'll walk through briefly. Importantly, the data set that I'm going to show you today has three mice that are black that I can't tell apart on individual frames. So as I click through, what's important is that within the mouse, it stays i.e. mouse 1, mouse 2, mouse 3, but across frames, I don't know which was what designated as mouse one. So as long as you're consistent with an animal, you can be inconsistent across frames, as long as the animals truly look the same. Okay, after you've gone through and labeled all the frames that you need for your training set, we're gonna to progress to create a new training data set. Here you'll see that there's one additional option called crop and label data, which we recommend for multi-animal projects. This takes a bit longer as so we'll go through each frame, crop them to specified sizes, and use this as a data augmentation method for the next step. Once you've created the training set, we're gonna move on to train data network. We use a different backend optimization method and data augmentation method for multi-animal pose estimation. So we're actually gonna train for shorter i.e. about 50,000 iterations is enough. Be mindful that if you create a specified number of the shuffle to match that in the training network, and then you can begin. Once your network is trained, which will take several hours on a GPU, we're going to evaluate it. As you'll see, this tab has many more options that are highly crucial for the success of multi-animal pose estimation. Please check the help functions for evaluation and importantly, cross-validation. The first step is to evaluate the network as you're used to doing. At this point, there's also an additional option to plot test maps, i.e. the part affinity fields, the score maps, and the location refinement layers. You can do this for three test images, or if you would have checked, yes, I want to plot all the maps before you ran step one, you'd get it for every single image in your train and test set. This is computationally quite expensive, such that we built in this button so you could just get a sense of how these maps actually look. As a side note, as we showed in our original Nature Neuroscience papers, the more body parts you have, the better. So here we used 12 different body parts per mouse. That was an example of what the location refinement map looks like. Here's a slightly better view of what these maps look like, but you can find these under your evaluation results folder under maps. Cross-validating the parameters before you assemble animals and before you perform inference on videos is a crucial step in multi-animal pose estimation. 
We suggest you carefully look over the docs, including the doc strings, which you can load within the GUI, and launch the edit config YAML file for even more potential options. To keep this video relatively short, we're going to move on and I'll go through the next tabs. There's one tab called Video Editor, which is optional, which allows you to downsample, crop, or shorten videos that you might want to analyze. Then we're going to move on to analyzing videos. When you run Analyze Videos, there's now a new function that says Create Videos for All Detections. If this isn't looking good, you're going to already want to go back, add new data, or refine data, etc. This is a really crucial point because this allows you to check if whether or not the body part detection points is working well. Once you analyze the video, the next step is to assemble the animals and convert them into tracklets. Then, on the next tab, you can load the tracklet file, which in this case would be box.pickle or bx.pickle, and the original untracked video, shown here. Once we have these tracks, we're going to refine the tracklets. The first step is to launch a new GUI called the Refined Tracklets GUI, which allows you to do two things. One, it allows you to go through and look at the accuracy of the videos frame by frame, or essentially playing through the video. You'll notice that you can also click on individual body parts to get a previous and past history all through the video. You can also click on an individual body part, select drag or hit D as a hotkey to move them and refine them within the video, as shown here. The real utility of this GUI is to fix major swaps. So here what I've done is flag an arbitrary start frame and stop frame because there were no major swaps, but we're going to pretend. You can lasso these body parts, now they're highlighted, and reassign them to a new mouse. So now, if you see, it goes from orange to pink, and you can see this large jump in the trajectories. What we'll do next is fix this by again flagging a start frame, a start frame, lassoing again, and then reassigning back to the correct identity to make nice, smooth tracklets. Once you're satisfied with correcting any major swaps or any micro revisions, but we'll get back to that in a second, you save, close the GUI, and then in step two, we can actually filter the tracklets to get rid of any jitter that there might be. Then go back, select this new edited tracklet data and relaunch the GUI. This can be an iterative process. Now you'll notice that the tracklets are very smooth, the identities are correct, we can continue to make any micro additions or edits that we like to these individual body parts before we move on to creating videos and using this data for downstream processing. Once you've edited this file, you again save, close the GUI, and at this point you have an optional step to merge any frames that are edited. This will smartly go through, find the frames that you edited, and throw them back into the training set if you'd like to retrain at a later time. Now you can create labeled videos, plot trajectories, so on and so forth. Again, in this GUI, there's several different options. You can plot the number of trail points, you can include a skeleton, you can create videos with the identity labeled, you can use the filter prediction. Simply hit run, this will create the video. 
as we can see here. Moreover, you don't need to reset anything fully. You could also just check create ID, color, no, and then you get the individual body parts labeled as I'll show you here. Okay, now we have two videos, one with the identity labeled, one with the body parts labeled. Now you can go forth with these H5 files as you're used to, to use for downstream applications. Thanks for watching this tutorial. We hope it was helpful. Welcome to 2.2 and happy deep lab cutting.